Hello, this is Lonnie with Rolling O Farm. You know, one of the greatest challenges to rotational grazing is having accessible water in every paddock or every location that you move the animals to. And there are a number of solutions to that. If your pockets are deep enough, you can run a permanent line. But as I said, that is very expensive. You can also tote by hand, which is a great workout, but that's not feasible in every situation. Today, I wanna to show you what I use as a mobile watering station for goats and sheep. Come along. So this is a contraption that I rigged up that works pretty well as a mobile watering station for goats and sheep. It's not as convenient probably as a permanent underground water line would be, and it may not be practical for everyone, but it does allow me water access anywhere that I can pull a trailer. All it consists of is a small utility trailer, one of the IBC liquid storage totes, a garden hose, an automatic float valve, and a small mineral tub for the water itself. I'm going to build another one today and I'll show you what I do. So this is an old 4x6 utility trailer that I found on Facebook Marketplace for a couple hundred dollars. It's not ideally as heavy duty as I would like it to be, but I think if I'm careful with it and don't put too much weight on it that it'll suffice for what I need. This is a, 250, a 275 gallon IBC liquid storage tote that I also found on Facebook Marketplace. I think I paid $35 for it. If you buy these used, make sure that whatever was stored in them previously was food grade safe. They use these to store all types of chemicals and, and everything, so don't just pick one up. Make sure that it's labeled food grade safe on it if you're going to be using it for a waterer. So I've rinsed this out real well, and I have centered it on the trailer just a little bit in front of the axles so that the weight will be on the tongue of the trailer rather than on the back of the trailer. I also secured this in place just by taking some treated two by fours and screwing them down to the decking on the trailer on all four sides to keep it from shifting whenever it is being pulled around. So these IBC totes come with different styles of valve stems. And the reason why you want to know what type of valve stem your tote has is because you can buy adapters that will convert this from whatever size it is down to a regular garden hose, what will fit on a conventional garden hose. Now this is a cam lock valve stem on this particular IBC tote, and I was able to get this adapter off of Amazon for about $16. And it just fits on there like that and then clamps on. So in order for the tank to vent properly, you will need to drill a hole, a small hole into the top of the lid. Doesn't have to be very big, just enough where air can vent through there. So this is just a 50 foot garden hose that I picked up at Walmart, I think for $25. And it will uh, suffice for what I need it to do. And I'll mostly leave it rolled up because I don't want to use all of it most of the time. But if I do need to run a longer 
uh, run it away from the trailer a little bit, it'll give me a little bit of flexibility to do that. And this is an automatic float valve that I picked up for $10 at my local feed store. So next I just want to attach the float to my garden hose. And this is just a, a tub that was left over from an old mineral lick that I had out. And uh, never throw these away. They're great for uh, waterers. Uh, you can put a salt block in them. And so I just want to now attach my float valve on the side of my water tub. Now it's time to put some water in this and see if it works. Now let's open up our valve and see if we've got water flow. Now, since it's not pressurized, you're not gonna have just gushing water, but you can see that the water's flowing out at a trickle, which is enough for goats and sheep. You don't have to have high volume flow for goats and sheep. And you see that when it fills up, then the valve closes and the water stops. And then as the water level drops, it starts to flow again. Now that we've run our test, we can go ahead and shut it off. Empty it out. Let it finish filling up and then we'll move it out to the field. Whenever possible, I try to park underneath a shade tree so that the water stays cooler, the tank stays cooler, and uh, algae doesn't build up as quickly in the, uh, in the tank as well when it's out of direct sunlight.
So if you have additional ideas for a mobile watering station, or maybe you have improvements to what I've talked about today, I would love for you to leave those in the comments below. That would help me and that would help the other viewers of the channel. If you're looking for goats and sheep and you're within driving distance of Northwest Alabama, give me a call, see what I have available. I try to specialize in starter herds and flocks or additional breeding stock for what you already have. You can visit the website, www.rollingofarm.com. We try to keep whatever inventory we have available up to date on there. I appreciate you watching. If you found the video to be helpful, like, subscribe to the channel for more content like this. And as always, God bless. Happy farming.